Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute since I've been here doing my own hair, so I'm in the salon today and I'm about to style my own hair. I thought why not hop on camera and do it. Now, one reason why I don't do a lot of videos here in the salon when I'm doing my own hair is because there's a crazy echo in here. I've tried using my lapel mics and all of that. So the majority of the video I'm going to record, but I think that I'll do a voiceover so that you can get the best quality experience. Today, it is time for a relaxer. And I'm super happy about it because I have been trying to be more disciplined with stretching my relaxers. But I live in Texas and we have had 100 and above degree temperatures for 20, 30 days. So my hair is sweating out just because it's hot here, but also because I'm very, very engaged in my workout regimen. So I have been waiting for this relaxer and I'm about to get into it. I'm so ready for this relaxer. Analyzing the situation, my hands have gloves and now I'm just basing the exterior. Base is important because it protects the skin. As our body temperature gets hotter, that relaxer does run a little bit. So it's good to protect your ears and around your skin. I'm using a sensitive relaxer, so I'm mixing it with the developer thoroughly before adding it to the areas that I'm processing. I got the mirror in back of me because it helps me to just see when I'm styling or whatever I'm doing behind myself. But now I'm going through and parting my hair. I'm hoping also that that back mirror, even though it's a little dirty back there, I do realize gives you uh, a little bit more idea of what's being done. This video is not a relaxer tutorial. I do suggest that if you do relax your hair yourself, that you are mindful that relaxer does not go on your scalp. This is why it's so important for you to possibly not try this at home. Relaxer should be applied to the new growth of the hair. As you can see, I'm parting through each section, not just taking the relaxer and applying it to the whole strand because the ends of our hair have already been processed. So if you are, every time you're relaxing your hair, just putting relaxer on top of hair that has already been relaxed, you run the risk of over-processing the hair. So it's so important to be able to actually see where you are putting the relaxer. The strength, the consistency of the relaxer, the tools that you use, all of this stuff does make a difference. So I know that we have access to relaxers and we've been doing them since the beginning of time, but there are hazards that happen. So once I process the relaxer, I'm heading on back to the bowl. One thing about relaxers, child, you do not want to play any games about making sure that you thoroughly rinse the chemical out of your hair. Now, again, this is one of them reasons why I'm not suggesting that everybody slap relaxer on their hair at home because if you leave some relaxer somewhere on the nape of your neck or behind your ear or anywhere in your hair, you really can cause burns to your scalp if you overprocess it, if you leave it too long. Like, it's a whole lot of stuff that can go wrong with relaxers. But I'm gonna get off of this tangent. I think that y'all realize that as a professional, I suggest that you get your hair relaxed by a professional. And if you don't, make sure that you take all of the necessary steps, like this one that I'm taking right now. When you rinse out a relaxer, make sure that you are using a normalizer slash neutralizing shampoo that cream of nature that you got under the sink is probably a great shampoo for something else but that's not what you use here you want to make sure that you are taking your hair's ph back to a normal level and the only way that you can do that after chemical processes is to use a normalizer or neutralizing shampoo Another very important part of chemical services is making sure that the hair is properly conditioned. So I'm going under the dryer with my conditioner. This is Influences Multiplex Conditioner for about 15 minutes, and then I will be ready to move forward with styling. After I rinsed out this conditioner, 
just analyzing the situation, trying to see how to relax the process and just reveling in the fact that I am no more struggling because I have been struggling to get to this relaxer. So now I'm going in with the Pixie Polish Growth Oil in the areas that my hair is a bit finer, production is slowed down, your girl is early in her 40s and she is already seeing the heredity catch up in the crown and in my edges. So I'm always using the growth oil and I have seen major, major growth in these areas. Then I'm just going through and sectioning my hair off from my mold using the wider end of my comb to get the foundation of how I want the mold to go so that I'm not, you know, combing through hair that isn't ready to be molded. I'm adding the new paraben-free, so freight-free, dye-free molding mousse to my hair. Just adding it to the top of the hair and kind of working it through with my hands. With this um, lighter formula, it's necessary to add a little bit more product. Going through and just working the product through my hair in each section, combing the hair around my head to form the mold. If you're not familiar with molding, molding is the foundation of your short hairstyle. So you don't want to rush here. You want to make sure that you are being diligent to get the hair to lay down in the areas that you want it to lay down. And this is also the time that you want to add any face framing or details to the mold. Because I generally wear my hair um, with minimal heat outside of getting under the dryer and you know just kind of bumping maybe my tail and my sideburns, I add details, face framing, a little bit of waves and curls and just things that add detail to my mold because it is my style. In Texas, we are still in the triple digits and we almost in September. So I'm, and not even just cause it's hot, this is just how I get down. <laughs> I like my hair very minimal. So I go for more detail in my mold and then I just do minimal styling and adding these little details before I dry my hair really helps to give me the ability to not have to do too much to it afterwards. So I'm really intentional about what I want my end style to look like and I'm putting those things in place while I'm molding. Always using wrap strips to hold the mold in place. It helps the hair to dry close to the head without buckling or poofing. Now, if your hair is thick, you need a relaxer or you're stretching, then you wanna be intentional about how and where you lay your strips. Um, but the strips are, they are necessary to really perfect your mold. Now I'm going to the dryer for about 20, 25 minutes. Finish the style up. I'm going in with the Pixie-ish Daily Moisturizer. It is my daily moisturizing cream. And of course, I'm still using the Pixie Polish. I do everything with this Pixie Polish. It's great for shine. It's great for heat protection. Um, so I make a little cocktail of those two products and I'm just using my fingers to break up the mold. So I'm using the project products to hydrate my hair, to add sheen. Um, and just to soften it as I break up the mold. Now I'm using the Pixie Pomade to add some detail, to rough the hair up a little bit, to give it a little bit of movement and height. Still not reaching for any heat. I am using my fingers and the products to style my hair. So you can see how I'm running the pomade through my hair and it gives me as much lift as I want in whatever area. And I'm just taking it through my hands and styling the cut. Now I'm using the micro iron to just bump my tail just a little bit, still have the pomade on my hands so I'm able to just work through areas, adding a little detail here and there. And like I told y'all in the beginning, I am a bit finer in the crown, so I'm going in with fillers in the top just so that I don't have no sunroof up there. It's not terrible, but it's something that I notice. And because I am not styling my hair a lot, I like to make sure that I do that little extra oomph. Just a little bit more finger styling, roughing it. And this is my go-to look. 
here's my easy breezy i live in texas and it's over 100 degrees every day hairdo very simple soft it's easy for me to maintain it at home i just tie my scarf on get up in the morning use um, the pixie polish for shine and the moisturizer to hydrate my strands it's super hot outside so along with me drinking a ton of water i'm always making sure that i never leave home without properly covering my hair it's just like getting out of the shower and not putting no lotion on our hair needs protection from the elements too so i cocktail these two babies and then i just use a little bit of the pomade like y'all saw and just kind of add a little uh texture to the style sometimes i wear it flat sometimes i wear headbands y'all know if you've been around my channel for a minute that i am a headband girl that's what i'm doing until at least the end of august anything else that you want to see regarding short hair go ahead and drop your suggestions in the description below so until next time i will talk to y'all in the next video thanks